Alright, so I've just rocked up to Bunnings. I'm about to pick up all the timber, all the materials I need for my own job I'm going to be doing. This job should take two days, and then after that, I'm going to be subcontracting from Wednesday to Friday. And what I'm going to do is be very open about how much I've made during this week. I'm a bit nervous about sharing this information. I'm not sure if there'll be a bit of backlash from publicly talking about how much I quoted for this job I'm about to do, and also what I charge as a subcontractor. But what I'll do is firstly take you through this first job that I'm doing myself, and I'll share the cost of materials, how much I'm paying Mitchell, who's given me a hand, how much I'm paying myself. And then I'll also share with you how much I'm going to be making and how much I charge as a subcontractor for the rest of the week. All right, so the job for the next two days is we haven't done this frame, but we're continuing on and we're just going to be building the roof. I reckon we should get it done in two days. I think it might be tight, but there's a bit of extra work in there, but we should be okay. That's not a good start. Oh, we might be losing money already. I did not quote to fix this frame up. That's an external wall. About 15 mil. No gang plate, nothing up there. Shoot, one, one nail there. Go there. Well, the way we're going to build this roof is we're going to build a small wall across there. It's going to be about 500 high. And then our rafters are going to sit on that and full across this way. And that's going to get us about five degrees of fall. So we've climbed up the important walls. Mitchell's just going to fix up a few more things for the frame. While he's doing that, I'm just going to start cutting a bunch of these studs for that external wall. Do you mind bringing me a saw in, please? So all we've done is we squared up that line, which is the outside of our plate. So I'm going to check that out. And then we've just done a line across showing us the, um, the angle of what the top plate's doing. Mm -hmm. So that's my 8 mil there. And what I can do now is since I've got that line, I can just measure what that is to there. Would have said that's 20 mil. Measure down 20 mil there, do a square line. And that should be the bird's mouth hole. I've done 8 mil because when we had it on the angle, I had it was hitting there and I had 8 mil from the top plate on the other side to underneath there. Yeah, so that 8 mil is just going to make it as flat as possible. Don't need to check it anymore. There's no point doing an excessive checkout. Okay, so I'm just going to go parallel. 18. 18. Shut off with a jigsaw. Let's cut the other side. You good. Sweet. How are you sitting? You happy with your bird's mouth? Both open at the front and then hard in the back. Yeah, it mustn't be level then. This one's perfect. Um, I want to make sure we got clearance in there too. Just um, mark it, what's level. And what we'll do, before I recut it, we'll try it on the other side of the roof. And um, if it's good on the other side of the roof, we can use it. Perfect. All right, so while Mitchell goes through and he cuts all the rafters for us, I'm sitting up here with a string line and I'm going to start cutting all the studs and framing out. Framing out for a rake wall coming through here. It's going to get really important later. We'll show you what we're doing with it later.
I know I'm definitely going to get at least one comment asking why am I not using the AG frame. I've been raving about it for so long. Obviously using the Pazzy right now. It's because I've only got two batteries for the AG kit. We've got one set in the store right now which Mitch is using. So Mitch is using one battery, other one's dead. So yeah, I think I need to get a few more batteries. I've got one raked wall done, that side's good. I do want to put a 9045 top plate on that side just for the extra height. The rest of the job doesn't call for a double pitching plate, so we're just gonna have to go through afterwards and nog underneath our rafters where it lands in between the studs up there. Um, on that note, I'm actually short of 9045, so I'm gonna head off now to Bunnings, get three more sticks, which should do everything. We got one stick there, so we only need three more. Um, have some lunch and we'll get back into it. Uh, let's get back to it. We're about 33 degrees right now. Sweet. Ready for rafters. Before we do put these rafters up, I'm just gonna do two more temp races, just going down in the center of these walls here, which have no internal walls or external walls into them. This is where the rafter could bow that wall in or out, and you can have a slight bow in your top plate. So we're just gonna put some temp races in there, so we know it's all straight, everything's all good when we shoot our rafters off. Yeah, it's good, good. Yeah. All right, let's do the other side. Feels like the GoPro is gonna overheat. It's getting that hot out here. Two rafters are up and what we're doing is just doing every second one for now. And that way, as we go, we can plumb up this wall behind me. If we did every single one, it might get hard trying to play around plumbing it. Every second one, the wall should be plumbed and we can fill the rest in later. Rafters are done, Mitch is shooting those off now. What I'm working on is we've got our outriggers cut. We've left that last rafter out for a purpose. Our outriggers are gonna butt into the second last rafter, sit on our wall and stick out about 300 mil so that we can create an eave. And then we're gonna put another rafter on the face of those outriggers, which gives us an eave and then also a screw line for the roof and sheets on the top. I'm struggling right now, it is. I think it's just ticked over to 35 degrees. The reason we got the blocks is we're gonna sit them up there together then I'll get you to hold it. I'm gonna move my ladder to the end. I'm gonna run a thread edge from those ones across to know how far to get it. And as soon as I get it in line, I'll get you to shoot yours off there. Obviously, we're gonna fill those in every 600 mil the whole way through. We just got a few there just so we can get them up today. I'll do the rest tomorrow when you're not here. At least we got that in. I'll play around, screw that off and finish this up tomorrow. Let's do the other side. We're sitting at 35 degrees right now. Good time to leave, but with that weather, I'm happy with the amount we got done. Obviously, we just, we've just we done a couple outriggers just so we can hold this last rafter in place. It's just me here tomorrow, no Micho, so I wanted to get as much stuff done as I could while he was here, and he was a legend too. 
I'm happy with the results today, especially in the heat. It's a bit cooler tomorrow, so hopefully we can run through, get everything else done tomorrow. It's still a pretty big day tomorrow. I just rocked up the site and I'm looking at the weather. Yesterday was 35, it says. Today is going to be a top of 27. Having a look at it though, it was 27 degrees at 12 a.m. this morning. And it's going to get to a max of 24 during the day. It was a hot sleep last night. I think I should get this done today. And once this is done, then we can sit down and have a look at the cost and how much I made on this job. So I've got all the outriggers in and to make these work by code I've got them spinning back past the wall more than double than what they overhang coming out 355 and they're running back around 800 mil here which is perfect for holding our last rafter outside of the house here so we can get that E finish but the problem is we've got a 1200 mil gap here without a rafter so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna have to cut nogs and nog in a rafter the whole way through there and that's something we're gonna have to do on both sides too Sweet. That's one side done. I'm gonna jump over, do the same thing on the other side, and I'm gonna save screwing it all off until later. It's still a bit early, and I don't wanna make heaps of noise until a bit later on in the day. Just finished that far side, and obviously, we got the side we did this morning done as well. So I'm gonna go through now with bugle screws and just get two bugle screws onto either side of the outriggers. So I'll go two through that way, two through that way. And I'm not gonna worry about bugle screwing the nogged rafter running in between. I've got heaps of nails. I'm comfortable to walk on that. That's not gonna go anywhere, that's fine. Oh, I've got quite the list of things we need to get done today. So I'm just gonna keep jumping around and doing just, you know, whatever I feel like when it comes to it. What we're gonna do now, since there's no kitchen plate on that wall there, wherever I have a rafter that's not landing directly on a stud or within a hundred mil of the stud, I have to go through and put a nog underneath that top plate to support it. Oh, I've just run home for lunch. The job's right around the corner from home, uh, which is, Pretty convenient. Before coming home though, I did go through and complete two lines of noggins. And with them done, I think that's most of the work I have to do off the ladder on the ground. The rest of the stuff I can do on the actual roof. I know looking at it, we do need strapping over the beams. There's more bracing needed on the walls. That's not part of the quote for the job I'm doing right now. I'm just gonna target on the upper roof. And then we're gonna come back later. I'm gonna talk to the client about going through and finishing off that frame for a lot of the stuff that has been missed. All right, let's get back to it. See you later, buddy. I reckon what I'm going to do is jump up and start doing some cross braces on the top. with two cross braces and I'm going through and making sure they wrap underneath the ball plates. In this case, I'm wrapping them under some lintels, making sure it's all tied off properly. And I've spoken to the client and he does want me to come back and do all the strapping and, and all the missing items in the frame before the inspection comes to make sure it hopefully passes in the first go. With the cross braces done, I also need to go through, flick a line for the top of our rafters so we can cut them off to have a straight fascia and eave line. If that line flicked, I'm just gonna have to go through and plumb down from that line on every single rafter and cut those tails off. All right, so that job's completely done now and I was just about to sit down, look at what the quote was, look at how much we got paid and work out how much I earned for those two days. And just as I was about to do that, I got a call from my sister 
Long story short, her work has some good connections and she always gets free tickets for stuff. She just got two very late last minute tickets to Pink tonight. I've never really been a Pink fan. Uh, don't know too many songs. My sister got the tickets, everyone else either didn't want to go or had things on tonight, it's very last minute. Um, so I might as well head to the city and see what this concert's like. We'll probably only stay for half of the concert, don't want to be out too late. I'm not too sure what to expect, let's check it out. So th this is my first day being a subby for the week. Which also means I can't sleep in, we gotta get to work on time, so I'm a bit tired after last night. I genuinely try to say yes to as many opportunities as possible, so when I got the free tickets last night, don't even listen to Pink, I was like, yeah, this is gonna be good, let's go. I was actually blown away by how many songs I knew. There were so many songs that I've heard before, had no idea they were Pink songs, and I was also impressed by how good the performance was. It was definitely a good night. But for now, let's get back into things, and let's see where this deck's at. I wasn't here for the last day without working on it, so let's see what's been happening. There were a few people at the deck yesterday, so a fair bit has been done since I've been there. For starters, the subfloor is done, it's been inspected, everything has got the tick of approval. Um, I think there's a few places just where there weren't enough dyno bolts in the whalers, but the boys have gone through, finished everything, and we're good to start decking. Actually, something else that came up on the subfloor inspection, you can see it on this angle here, and that is the dirt is too close to the bearer. So one of the boys did go around today with a shovel, going underneath the subfloor and just clearing out the dirt so we've got enough space. So what's so interesting about this deck though is I've never done a deck this way, I've actually never seen a deck this way. But as you can see we're using an assortment of different width decking boards. It's a very unique pattern, we're not ripping these down, we've just ordered the 42, 70, 90 and 140 decking boards. And we're just going to go through and screw them down in the patterns that you can see here. I spent the entire day today just working on this long side section of the house. We measured the section and it's actually 39 metres of just straight decking going the whole way through. And to get it straight I'm doing it how I do any other deck. We've gone through down our bay boards first, and then the boys have gone through cutting all the decking between the bay boards. And I'm just jamming timber wedges in between the decking boards, tapping them down to make sure the spaces are the same either side. And this way always works perfectly to so make sure we've got straight decking runs going the whole way through. I ended up getting about 20 metres of this deck screwed off today. Slow progress, we'll be back on it tomorrow. And around the corner too, some of the boys got all the bay boards done underneath the self fresco. Alright, let's talk about money now. The main reason you clicked on this video. I'm just going to get the quote up now for that job we did and we'll break down all the costs, we'll break down the materials, we'll break down what I made, what Mitchie made, um, we'll leave out GST and all that out of it for now, it'll just be what we made before our personal tax. Cool, so I've got the quote in front of me now and the combined price is $4,014. Typically on a frame you don't normally buy materials, but for this job I did go through and buy the materials and here we go. So the quote was $4,014. Materials cost $2,715.72. We won't worry about that. That leaves me with $12.99 before I paid Mitchy. But if you do also remember, on Monday, I did have to run back to Bunnings and I was a bit short on timber. So I spent another $120 there on $90.45. I'm putting that down to just a bad estimation when I was doing the quote. Um, so if that's the case, I'm not going to go to the client and ask for more money. I think that's my mistake. I gave him a quote. I try to honor that quote as much as possible, unless there's stuff out of my control. I've previously done jobs where I've lost money just because I screwed up the quote. And at least say they're not big jobs. They're just small weekend jobs. So I've never really screwed myself up too much. It's just been a big learning curve. And I suppose every job's different. So it's still always going to be a learning curve. And I'm actually, I'm not sure exactly how much I made yet. So we'll work this out in real time now and see if I quoted this job well. All right, so before I paid Mitchie, I made eleven seventy nine. Now, I don't pay Mitchie's wage. He's just an apprentice at the same company that I subbed to. So he did come and help me on this job on his day off. I asked him what he wants an hour. He's a fourth year apprentice. I think he's on 25 an hour as an apprentice. And he asked me for that same rate to come help me. Like, I mean, it was a public holiday. So he was already getting paid 25 an hour. And working for me would have put him on 50 an hour, essentially. But regardless of that, he was coming in for his day off. And I said... I'm going to give him minimum 30 an hour. So we started him at 30 an hour and he's doing me a favor. So I also said, depending on how the job goes, if we smash it out, if everything goes right, I can give him a bit more. As you can see, everything did go right. We did smash the job out. So instead of paying him 30 an hour, I did bump his pay up to $40 an hour. So I ended up paying him 320 for the day. Whenever an apprentice is helping me out on the job, I always try to pay them a little bit more, especially if they've worked hard, they've done a good job. I remember being there as a first year or second year apprentice, waking up in the morning, 
I've had no money in my account, my fuel tank was an empty, I had no idea how to get to work. So sometimes that extra $80 here and there, like honestly helps so much as an apprentice. So I, I do try to help them out if they are helping me out. And as you saw, Mitch is an absolute gun too. Like he was worthy of $40 an hour that day. He smashed everything out. That leaves me with $859 for two days, meaning I made $430 a day, which look, it's all right. But when I am going out, creating my own jobs, sourcing my own jobs, I do truthfully want to be making a little bit more than that. For this job, everything did go smooth. Everything did go right. So if something did go wrong and it did take longer or I had to pay for something, I mean, I did pay $120 more for timber, but something worse could have happened and that's putting me out of pocket. For that reason, I do try to make a little bit more money when I am running my own jobs and to also pay for the time that I spent quoting the job, checking out the job. But it is a fine line. I also don't want to rip off customers. I know how hard it is in this market to own a house and then on top of that, get work done. So I try to keep my prices manageable so no one's getting screwed over. And then secondly, obviously there's a lot of tradies out there too. So there'll be other people putting their prices out. If my price isn't low, they're gonna go for someone else. So it is a fun game trying to find out that perfect balance on how to quote jobs. If you do find an interest in this type of video talking about how I quoted the job, I might even make a video in the future where I film the entire process of quoting a job, how I determine how much money I'm gonna quote it for, and then also doing the job and seeing how much we made. I feel like that could be a fun concept to share. But anyway, we'll get back to work. I'll have a chat later in this video about how much I make as a subcontractor. All right, Thursday today, it's gonna to be a big day, not work-wise. Big day because we have round one tonight, Carlton Richmond. I'm gonna to be heading straight from work up there. Bloody keen, I'm a tie boy myself. So it's not looking good for us, but I think with uh, Nankervis, Dusty and Lynch all coming in, we could stand a chance. In terms of the actual job though, the stuff that you guys actually care about. Um, oh, grab it. Um, yeah, it's probably going to look like another day of just screwing off boards. I'm pretty sure I heard that we have three kilometres of decking that we're putting in here. I don't know if that's confirmed for the total distance or if that was just the first order because the first order of decking was quite a bit short. We still have a huge order coming tomorrow. But essentially, it just means another day of doing the same thing, making my way down this long run. We did get this 40 metre section completely done. You probably did notice we did skip the joist that extended out to the pool. Uh, we're just going to do that one a little bit later, but for now I'm going to make my way around the quarter and start doing the same thing, screwing off the bays underneath this alfresco. Alright, another day of screwing done. The last few days have been a bit boring, a bit slow. There's just so many screws to do. I've gone through four boxes of a thousand screws, so I've done four thousand screws in the last two days. It's been quite tedious, my back's been a bit sore. Hopefully tomorrow we can start doing some rips and faceboards, something a little bit different. But now we're going to head straight to the city again. Round one starts tonight, Richmond Carlton, and I'm bloody keen. Oh my god. Yeah, we didn't get the win last night, but it was a close game, and I'm actually I'm quite happy with that. Tigers weren't looking good for this year, so I'm happy we actually put up a fight. We're pulling up to site now, though. There's going to be a lot of people on this deck today, and I'm going to give it a really good crack. Look, I'm not going to show you another day of screwing off the deck. It was the same thing, but we finished under the alfresco. We made a start on this L shape on the far side of the house. Obviously, that 40 meter run is done. And the boys also started extending it over to the pool. I didn't take any videos of it as well, but we did have that front landing by the front of the house, and that was also completely done. We're making some really good progress on the deck. I'm quite happy how much we got done over the last three days that I was on it. Didn't film too much today, it's the same stuff every single day, just screwing off boards. Uh, it's all I've done for the last three days. The day's not quite over yet, I'm leaving the deck, and I'm not going to go back to do any more work on that deck. I'm heading to the frame that I've done the last few videos at. So the trusses are finally made for the upstairs balcony and the upstairs roof. I'm heading there now to meet the delivery of the trusses. I'm hoping that the crane's big enough so we can land them on the roof and I'm going to help land them up there. And we're just going to get ready for um, that rooftop balcony to start next week. Sweet, we're on. The 
train, couldn't get anything upstairs, but we have a lot of floor posies, a lot of trusses, a big pile of stuff right now. We'll, we will sort it out first thing Monday. The floor posies are for the roof. It's the most complicated roofing system I've ever done, having that rooftop balcony. It's gonna be awesome, but that's gonna be next week's video. I'm gonna spend all week working on that roof upstairs, filming all of it. But the last thing I do wanna talk about in this video is what I get paid as a subcontractor. So obviously we've already talked about what I got paid and what I made for my own job I did earlier this week. The subcontractor rate, this one's a little bit different. I'm gonna turn that aircon down, it might be a bit loud, but I'm cooking. My car says it's 36 degrees. I don't realize it's gonna get so hot today. So firstly, at the moment, my going subby rate, for if anyone asks me for work, if I'm gonna go work for anyone, it's at $60. I'm happy with that rate, I think it's a pretty good rate. That is not the rate I'm on right now though. The $60 rate is if I'm working an odd few days here or there, if I'm working for a few builders, it's a rate which is good enough to cover me if I need to keep looking for work or don't have consistent, constant work. The rate I'm on right now is a little bit lower than that, but I'm happy to take this rate because the company I work for, they're great. They're always gonna make sure there's work for me if I want it, they're looking out for me. It's almost like I am on wages. They are gonna make sure there's always work for me. And there's also a few reasons why I do prefer to be paid a bit less than say at this company. One of them is they do give me my own jobs that I can run, such as a frame I'm at right now. I've got a great group of workers working for them too, so I can get some good boys on with me, we can smash out these frames. And the reason I haven't jumped over and done my own company, and I'm happy to stay here, is I have been spending a lot of my free time and spare time working on these videos. So it's a good deal where I can focus on doing good carpentry, I can make these videos, and I don't have to stress and worry about having workers that I need to pay, and I, need to, and I don't need to worry about constantly sourcing work. The fact that I'm a subby means if I do find my own private small jobs, I'm not actively looking for them, but if I find one, I love doing them. I can just take a few days off working for this company, do my private jobs and come back here. All right, that's it for this week. I'm going to head home, try to edit this video before the footy starts. It's been a pretty big week, so I'm going to go home and have a bit of rest this weekend before we jump onto this rooftop balcony. It's going to be a nightmare. Next week's video is going to be wild.